Well, welcome back. I hope you had good chats. We are in pure love principle number 10. Number 10. So if you would open up your notes, I'll do the same, to number 10. Jesus came to redeem healthy order to the earth. Did you know the earth is not living in a healthy order? Really? <laughs> surprise, surprise. We live in things out of order, and if you do things out of order, it's unhealthy. It's kind of like if you, you know, we're going to brush your teeth in the morning, and you, you know, take your toothbrush out, brush it, and put it down, and then put the toothpaste on. It's out of order. It's not healthy. It's not the, the way that is best to do it. And the world is out of order because it's upside down from what God intended. Years ago, you know, I'm one of seven children, my poor mother. And my oldest brother, when he started to become a teenager, he said to my mother uh, one day, and he was in those rebellious teenage years, and he says, you know, I never asked to be born. My mom had a great answer. She looked right at him and said, well, sweetheart, you weren't what I had in mind either. <laughs> that was a great answer. Well, you know, I think that sometimes we want to yell at God. I didn't ask to be born. And I think he'd lovingly say, this isn't what I had in mind either. He never intended for us to suffer the way we suffer. And, and I tell you what, if, if you live in America or Western Europe, you, suffering is so minimal compared to what's around the world. But regardless of that, we do suffer. And the worst kind of suffering we do is emotional pain. If you were to choose between physical or emotional pain, which would you choose? If I could take a magic wand and touch you and you'd never be frightened or anxious again, who'd want me to? Because we live in a, in a world of anxiety. Maybe you deal with a lot of frustration and anger. Who wants to be touched? We weren't designed to live there, and yet it's where we're living. And Jesus came to redeem healthy order to the earth. Number one, healthy order means priorities are in the right order, which is being to do. Now, we are human beings doing stuff if we're healthy. But the order of this world is you're a human doing so you can be someone. That's mixed up. And it causes an energy loss that is huge. And so until we get the order straightened around, we're going to suffer energy loss. We are human beings designed to do something. We be to do, we don't do to be. And God and the devil have different perspective on that. In God's kingdom, you be to do because it's healthy. In the devil's kingdom, he's a dictator, so he forces you to do in order to be somebody. Now let me ask you, how do you feel? Do you feel like, which kingdom do you feel like you're living in? What kingdom has your attention? Did you notice at home you behave differently than when you're out? Oh, come on. It's not just me. Come on. You know? Your son has not cleaned his room all day. Your husband has not been home for a week. And you've pleaded with the child now over and over, and he just won't clean the room. And you're getting angrier and angrier as the moment is going, and your voice is being raised, and you're getting mad now. And you're telling him how you should clean his room, and the phone rings, and what do you do? Hello, how are you? And your kid looks at you like, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Hello. Why don't I go, what? <laughs> because we're afraid of being rejected. That's why. We're two-faced. We put on all day long what we think people want. And we're tired. God never designed us to be fake like that. And the tragedy is, it means you can't have real deep relationships. You get to have Facebook relationships, and I won't go any further than that. B, A, under the first piece. God values people for who they are. Turn to somebody and say, God values you for who you are. 
not what you're doing. When I, when I look and meet people, I don't look at their performance at all. I look at their heart and their character. I look at the integrity of their soul. And that's what I value. But regardless of whether they're there or that, they are valuable. God doesn't insist that you have those things worked out in order to be valuable. We often take what we value and we project it on people and say, you have to have this or you're not valuable. Everyone's valuable because they're created in the image and likeness of God. And last time I checked, I think he's pretty valuable. B, this is the important piece. From a position of value, people are able to healthfully serve one another. You know, we have the opportunity of a lifetime. You and I. We live in a confused, weary world that is screaming for one thing. What are they screaming for? To be loved. I have never met a person that didn't want to be treated respectfully or valuable. And we have the capacity to bring that to them. It doesn't cost you a lot to smile and care about someone. It doesn't cost you a lot to love someone. And the bigger thing is if we have received Jesus Christ into our hearts and he lives there, that we have a miracle living inside of us. And that miracle is the love of God. And we can share that with people because the resources of who God is in our lives, we can love people as they're, as they're worthy to be loved and believe in them as they're worthy to believe. There's a friend of mine, her name is Sandy Olbrick, and she wrote a song. In fact, it's the opener of the DVD series that we're taping is what we're gonna use, because the song so touched me. And I wanna read just a piece of it. Well, I've been down the lonely road. I've seen the hearts and wounded souls. And I pray it will be okay. Whenever I drive down the streets and I see the people on the street begging, that's what I feel. It's a lonely world out there for a lot of people. I've seen the hurt that's in their eyes, the shattered dreams and broken lives, and I pray be their strength today. We have an opportunity to be the miracle in people's lives. It doesn't hurt to care, to take a couple extra minutes and care. And our caring will set people free. The chorus is the part that really grabs me. The chorus goes like this of this song. There's a miracle in you. There's a miracle in me. There's a miracle of hope that can set us free. You see, if I love you, and you love Vicky, and Vicky loves Roy, and Roy loves Bill, and Bill loves Tony, what begins to happen is everybody gets respected. But that's not the society we live in because it's out of order. Society says, save the seats for the people with the to-do list. And the people that don't have that get pushed aside. Then it gets worse. If you have a big shame list, they get pushed out. Not even a side, they get pushed out. Well, we have this miracle inside, and it's the capacity to love people to freedom. If you were to ask me in the mental institution what was the hardest thing I went through, it was a lack of dignity and the rejection. I remember a lot of the stuff that they would do, that was painful enough, they did horrible things. But when they would stand there and laugh about it, the pain and the humility and, and uh, um, the lack of dignity, the, the humiliation is what I meant to say. And we are able to care. But it takes you looking beyond 
what you want, what you need, trusting God with that, and giving extra to others. I've set my life to that, and it's what's freeing me. <laughs> That's what my life is about. I've taken everything, and I've thrown it over the line for God. If, if, if Christianity isn't real, am I going to be angry? Because I've abandoned everything else. And I'm here to tell you, even if the ending wasn't heaven, it was just you're dead at the end, I am happier and freer than most people I know. Because it isn't about me. It's about us. What I want you to walk away from pure love with is not a sense of I have to get to the clean water but I'm invited to the clean water. I'm invited to this kingdom of, of freedom and peace. And as we help you with the directions of how to get there, that you make it a journey, and in a journey, you'll recognize that you were designed to bring people with you, to love them as they are deserve to be loved. They're valuable, and that's my hope. Let's go to C before I start crying. When we ignore proper order, we perform to be valued. If you don't intentionally make a choice to learn how to be, and from the state of being, do, and it takes both, but in the right order, then you will be destined to live in the kingdom of performance. You can't choose one in between. There isn't the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness and your little world. There's one or the other. You're either going to be to do or do to be. And if you don't get that cycle right, you are condemning yourself to the kingdom of darkness. And that's a tragedy because there is freedom. Number two, connecting with God means receiving the resources we need to love ourselves and others so we can rest. Years ago, uh, I'm going to share a story with you, but years ago when I was in the mental institution, one of the doctors there raped me continually. I had a lot of abuse up there and it was horrible. Not a fun place for a 15-year-old kid to be put and shock treatment and all sorts of stuff. And so years went by, I got out began to get free, got, began to get healthy. Time went by, and there was a court trial. And in the court trial, uh, they needed a witness, and the witness they needed was me. Because the person being accused went back to his diary from years earlier and discovered I was with them when he was being, at the time that he was being accused. In other words, he's being accused of a crime from years ago. He went back to his diary and looked, and I was living at their house when he was supposedly doing this thing. So he went to my parents, said, can she handle the court trial? He said, it's up to her. I went, got flown in, went to the court trial. So the person doing the accusing now had a problem because they forgot I live there. So what do you think the person needed to do to get my, destroy my credibility? Well, it's not too tough. She's schizophrenic and a multiple personality. Hello. So they just stood up and said, she's crazy. She can't testify. Which one's testifying today, dear? You see? So the judge said, okay, then we will have her tested. We'll put her through a battery of tests. And they did. Guess what doctor they called? And his staff put me through a battery of tests because he was real old. In fact, he was retiring. And they discovered I wasn't mentally ill anymore, and they cleared me to testify. So I testified through the week. That's not the point of the story. At the end of the week, when I was done with my job of testifying, the judge looked at me and he said, hey, before you go, how was your treatment in the hospital? And the doctor sat right over there. And he just got done saying, I'm sane. What do you think I thought? Burn, baby, burn. <laughs> And I was ready to nail him. There, there sat the judge. Doctor said, I'm squared away. I can honestly tell you, what, what, you know, what's going on. 
And I heard the Lord speak to me, let him go. I, I remember looking up saying, is there anyone else I can talk to? And I, I heard him say, yeah, there's three of us, but we all agree with each other. And I wrestled with that. I, you know, it's one of those 10 seconds can be an hour when people are waiting for your response. And I'm looking at this doctor, looking at the judge, looking at the doctor in my head, arguing loudly. But finally, I just couldn't get away from God saying, let him go. So I turned to the judge and I said, well, I'm all right. So they dismissed me. I went out and the doctor was waiting for me. He said, why didn't you tell? Why didn't you tell? And I said, because I'm okay. He said, what's happened to you? I mean, if I could bottle what's happened to you, I'd be rich. I said, buddy, you need what's happened to me because you're sick. And by the way, you're going to be meeting God on your own soon. You look pretty old now. I'm not going to judge you, but I know who is. And he just stared at me. What happened was he ended up... Um, Receiving Christ, filled with the Spirit, and died a short time later. What was interesting was I struggled for years with all the abuse of being frightened of men, hating men, and um, just dealing with insecurities at sleeping. It was gone. You see, when you love people, and you live in God's order and priority, you get free. That's how you get free. In my argument, when I was saying to God, why should I let him go? In my argument, I said, but I never did anything. Why would I let him go? And I'm arguing. Well, that was, gosh, a long, long time ago. And when that happened, 35 years later, I'm living in Rome with my family. And an old math teacher finds me somehow on the internet. And he and his wife come to visit. And I discovered he knew a lot about my past. And not many people did. My mom and dad, it was kind of the secret. But this guy knew a lot. And so my mom has died. And so I'm asking him questions about my past that I can't figure out. And so I, I brought up to him. I said, you know, um, my mom said I, I tried to kill two people. He said, yeah, you did. Ugh. I said, one of them was my mother. He said, yep. I said, do you know who the other one was? He said, yes, I do. I said, could you, could you tell me who it is? He said, no, I won't. I said, why not? He said, well, your mom didn't want you to know, and maybe it's not a good idea for you to know. But I can pester like any three-year-old can pester their mother. <laughs> you know? So I bugged him day after day, and finally he said, okay, that was me you tried to kill. I tell you what, <clears throat> talk about a knot in your stomach. I just stared at this guy. I mean, I'd grown to like him. It was really painful. And I said, um, I'm really sorry about that. I, you know, what do you say? Could we not mention it to your children? <laughs> you know? And he said, it's all right. You're forgiven. It's all right. It wasn't you. It's all right. And I finally said, why didn't you, why did you drop, char why did you not press charges? He said, well, that was interesting. God just quietly said to me, let her go. So what we don't understand is we want mercy. We want forgiveness. We want grace. But we don't take into account the treatment that we have of others, and we don't want to give them the same grace and mercy. My argument in the courtroom was I never did anything like that. Why, no, I only tried to kill people. But I forgot about that. And I look at how kind God was to speak at this man. Imagine if he had pressed charges on top of it. Who knows where I'd be right now? Do you see what I'm saying? We have this miracle inside of us, and that is Jesus Christ. And he wants us to love people because they're valuable and they're worth being loved. And we've got to drop all the other stuff. But it's tricky. Forgiving is tricky. Mercy is tricky. 
It requires God's help. That's why it's a miracle. So the only way you're going to get that resource, the only way you're going to get what you need, let me get this set, <clears throat> is by being connected to God. You can't get what you need in your life to love people, forgive people, and to be loved apart from connecting to God. You will forever live in a state of trying to work out your own identity and your value. The amazing thing about God is he so loves the world that he sent Jesus to redeem us. And redemption is not found just in dying for my sins. I am so grateful he died for my sins. That's not even on his radar, folks. He died and he rose again in order to redeem what was lost. Not to focus on how you lost it, but to make sure you and I have what we need to live the way he intended us to live. I have yet to meet many people that don't want to help people in the world. But they say, what can I do? I'm just one person. You can smile. You can help. You can serve others. You can. And it doesn't have to be walk on water stuff. That's not what they need. The very things you need, they need. And as we love others, what comes back to us is supernatural resource and all that we need to get through the things we can't get through on our own. And that's the miracle of God. Amen? So we're going to go through our talk time. Na, 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 na. And I hope that you guys can do more than just go through questions. But really begin to explore how do we love people? How do we learn to drop the lists and really just care? Okay? All right.